Perfect. So welcome, everyone. This is the fourth of the series of our seminars on water scarcity in Southern Europe. My name is Eva Enyadi. I'm a water scarcity project manager at EIT Climate Kick, and I will be your host today. Before we start the seminar, I would like to ask Andrea Rubini from Water Europe to give us a little bit of welcome uh, intervention. Andrea, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Eva, and thank you to all the speakers and participants of, uh, of this online seminar, uh, which has been organized in collaboration between the EIT uh, Community Water Scarcity and, and Water Europe. Uh, well, a, a warm welcome from Water Europe. Um, water scarcity is <clears throat> much more than a challenge. I mean, it's, it's a real threat to our society. And um, in, in the perspective of, uh, of the efforts to, uh, to support the green and digital transition in Europe, I think that uh, tackling uh, water scarcity uh, with new tools, with instruments, and uh, of course, I mean, the digital approach uh, to, to address, I mean, this, this, this threat's not any longer a challenge, is uh, at most necessary and important. Uh, I myself, I mean, uh, uh, I've been a witness of water scarcity in Southern Europe in the past summer, which is just not any longer uh, an alarm. I mean, it's uh, it's really a threat. And the water scarcity means that um, industries, cities, agriculture will suffer from this, and the, our stability of our society will be affected if we not take I mean, enough measures really to address the challenge of, uh, of scarcity of this precious resource, this water. And so it's a, really a welcome to, to the participants and, and many thanks for uh, the speakers for all your effort and the EAT community for uh, developing this, uh, this pathway. Thank you so much. And uh, once again, I mean, the floor is, is yours, Eva. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Andrea. So I will just take one minute to share my screen quickly. And I will start with a short presentation. So as I said, my name is Eva Anyadi and I work for EIT Climate Kick uh, as a water scarcity project manager. And uh, this seminar, excuse me, this seminar is uh, organized within the context of the EIT Water Scarcity Initiative, which is delivered by four of the knowledge and innovation communities of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. It is led by EIT Food and has the collaboration of EIT Climate Kick, the organization I represent, EIT uh, Manufacturing, EIT Digital, and other external organizations such as BioThor from Spain, Athena Research Center, and TU Delft. This initiative applies a multi sectoral approach to support entrepreneurs in the water sector. Um, and also to build capability and create knowledge, all with the aim to find innovative solutions to tackle water scarcity in Southern Europe. Today's seminar falls under the knowledge creation um, a pillar of the project. Our initiative started in 2020, when 16 international experts joined efforts uh, in a series of workshops to define the most pressing challenges of Southern Europe in, in terms of tackling water scarcity using the system innovation methodology. In 2021, 16 new experts continued this work and delivered two publications. On my screen, you should be able to see some QR codes that lead you to the, to the links where you can download these publications against a small fee. The first publication was a review of financial instruments available for water entrepreneurs. And the second one was a white paper de uh, describing policy, governance, and technological and financial uh, challenges and solutions to water scarcity in Southern Europe. In 2022, we enlisted 47 new experts who help us um, define um, and also to improve our understanding of water scarcity and help us to disseminate the outcomes of the two previous years. And this is why we came together today, because we are actually uh, 
delivering the fourth of a, a series of seminars, which started in June with a, a general understanding and introduction to water scarcity in Southern Europe, which was followed by a seminar on water pollution and water scarcity end of June. Uh, in July, we talked about the circle economy solutions to water scarcity, and today we were focused on the different smart and digital tools to tackle water scarcity. And the final seminar will be delivered as a co-side uh, co event to the water knowledge uh, event, also organized by Water Europe, and they will be focused on governance and financial instruments to tackle water scarcity on the 19th of October. And today I'm, I'm glad to uh, introduce uh, our new panel of experts who will discuss the different elements of smart tools to tackle to water scarcity. First, we will hear, hear um, a presentation by Nelson Carissou from the Polytechnic Institute of Setubal, who will talk about smart tools in urban and industrial water management. His presentation will be followed by a presentation by Simona Consoli uh, from University of Catania, will detail out the different agricultural small tools that could be used to tackle water scarcity. And finally, we will hear a presentation from Juan Miguel Ramirez Cuesta from the Spanish National Research Council, who will talk about the different barriers um, that, uh, uh, that exist um, in face of, intro of the introduction of these smart tools. The this, the, the presentations will be followed by a panel discussion where we are glad to uh, um, have the presence today of uh, Alexis uh, de Kerkov from Xylem, uh, Ruben Fernandes from uh, Aguas y Energia do Porto, and Katia Pinto from Smart Farm CoLab. And I would like to also thank uh, our um, um, experts who also took part in the preparation of this seminar, uh, namely Maria Jesus Blanco. Diego Intriglio Molina and Katarina Kosti. And with that, I would like to give the words to, to Nelson, who will start his presentation. Thank you very much, Eva. Uh, as Eva already said, my name is Nelson Caris. I teach uh, in the Polytechnic Institute of Stubal. My background is in uh, hydraulics and water resource engineering, and I will uh, talk about urban industrial water, the smart tools that we can use from to cook uh, water scarcity. Next. <clears throat> so uh, water scarcity does not affect uh, all countries by equal. It's uh, water distribution, whether rainfall, it's different in each country. Here's a, an, um, a chart where we can see that in Portugal, Greece, or in Spain and Italy, we have different uses. Uh, the biggest use is from uh, the agricultural sector, but we have also uh, in some countries more expression uh, of the industrial, like Portugal. Um, there is 30% uh, in, in Greece, it's the last bit 3%. So the biggest um, use uh, of water in, is in, in the agricultural sector. I will, will focus my presentation in the industrial and municipal sectors uh, and um next please i i will focus in the in this one and generally uh, the urban sector uh, is managed by water utilities that uh, generally uh, manage a lot uh, different type of assets since pumps uh, pipes uh, sewers and so on and uh, the pipes uh, in the sewers are mostly buried and uh, the water utilities to manage uh, this huge amount of assets need to have smart tools. Uh, they have different uh, tools uh, they, um, to, in the different divisions and the, the water utilities for different uh, uh, activities, uh, the daily activity. So they have, um, they, need, they collect, they need to collect also a lots of data from the sensors uh, that are installed in the in the field to to put them together and to have um, better uh, understanding or wisdom of the, uh, and knowledge about the, the the systems they are managing. So this is a complex. Um, this is a, what I feel these are complex organizations uh, that manage a lot. Uh, uh, many infrastructure, a uh, huge amount of infrastructure, and some of them are aging, 
and this uh, represents uh, some problems uh, like uh, water leakage and pipe bursts. Uh, and this is, of course, when uh, when we have when we when we face uh, water scarcity, it's not uh, a good news. Uh, uh, having this in the TV or in the media, that uh, one water utility has a, a big amount of water losses. Uh, this is an issue, and we should fight, of course, these water losses. And we need uh, better tools, smart tools, uh, to 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 help the water utilities to manage uh, their systems. Next, please. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about several types of digital tools. These digital tools uh, can have uh, big data, artificial intelligence, and uh, that could analyze data. They can can be smarter and analyze automatically the data and give some uh, uh, some insights about what is happening. So digital solutions enables the efficient management of water supply and versus water demand, as all is uh, written in this slide. I will show you now uh, a small video. Next, please, Eva, uh, where we can see what. Um, information and communication oh, technology. No, sorry. sorry. <laughs> when we, oh, don't worry. Uh, where we can see what are uh, the digital tools, where we can uh, use them. This is from ICT for Water, but uh, it explains in two minutes what is uh, these digital solutions, where they can be used in the water, in the urban water sector. Please, Eva, can you? also known as ICT, have the potential to significantly improve the way we manage, distribute, use and reuse water on a large scale. I ICT for water is... I think we are only... see the video. Or no, we are, we are only mm -hmm. listening to the sound, but not the video. It's not, it's stop it. Okay. I will try to reshare my screen again, because it was working before. So just give me one second. And select the two buttons, you know, yeah. in the left. Thank you. I'm sorry for this. Yeah, sorry for the... For this. The hiatus. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it works. If it doesn't work, we will we will just move on. Yeah, we can we can move on. Oh, let me see. I think it will work now. Yeah. Information and communication technologies, also known as ICT, have the potential to significantly improve the way we manage, distribute, use and reuse water on a large scale. ICT for Water is a cluster of all EU-funded research projects that apply ICT across water's entire life cycle and value chain. Our goal is to drive the European industry forward by promoting the transition of ICT technologies into the water sector. From pilot scale to wide market uptake, we aim to create a European borderless digital single market for water services. ICT for Water is part of an ecosystem that involves everyone. Researchers, water utilities, public authorities, and active citizens working together to develop and test new ideas. So, what are we working on? Low-cost sensors for monitoring water use and quality in real time and on a large scale. Big data analytics to support effective and time-sensitive decision-making. Applications for consumers aiming to induce sustainable changes in consumption behavior. Complex control systems helping us to minimize energy use at all steps of the water life cycle. Novel means to identify water leaks and reduce water losses. Improved forecasting of water demand helping us anticipate it and plan accordingly. And that's just a small sample with many projects already completed. 
I think we can stop here now. So. Yeah. So this was a, a lot, um, a small example, but um, what the potential, uh, the, put, the potential of uh, what a, a smart uh, dig, uh, the digital uh, tools that can be used in the water utility. So a modern digital utility uh, will have uh, lots of sensors in the, the field uh, connected uh, to um, everywhere by IoT and so on, and they will do uh, lots of things with that we here in the, the in the, the the video can you please pass to the next slide so uh, many digital uh, to, uh, many uh, water utilities are now uh, developing digital twin this digital twin is a replica of the water systems and for that they need to 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 climp a ladder that is from digitization. Digitization is having the, we have the physical infrastructure, we have information, the characterization of this infrastructure. So we, have, we need to, to put this in the digital form and we are going, uh, we are climping this ladder until we reach the digital twin. The digital twin uh, should give uh, a, insight more or less uh, automatically. They can do also adult modeling and they have uh, intelligence in artificial intelligence. And uh, now it's a buzzword and there is lots of research uh, about these digital twins, but should be a digital twin in the water, uh, urban water systems. So there are, we need, of course, data, quality data, and then we have more, uh, uh, information, knowledge and decision and then, then at the end, we can act in the water, urban water systems. Well, next, please. Of course, this is this is not easy to do. There are several barriers. Yeah, this is from the white paper that uh, Eva talked about. So we have, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, the users of smart tools do not always see the immediate payback of the investments of digital in digital tools. So there are lots of resistance from some uh, smaller water utilities. They don't see uh, what they can benefit to adopt uh, smarter tools, and this is a barrier. Uh, Juan, uh, after uh, Simona, will speak about a little bit uh, about this. And my presentation, I think it's all. I give the word to Simona. And she will speak about the agricultural sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nelson. Thank you, Eva. Uh, let me say that it is a pleasure to me to be part of this, of, the, of this important event, discussing on a so relevant topic about water scarcity. Uh, in my, I'm Simona Consoli, I'm professor of uh, um, agricultural hydraulics at the University of Catania in Italy. Um, so as we know well, please have uh, the next. Uh, as we know well, uh, water scarcity conditions uh, greatly affect uh, the agricultural sector. And uh, we also know well that the agriculture is one of the main water consumers and the productivity of the primary sector uh, depends uh, greatly on the availability of water resources. This implies the necessity to find a new concept uh, to do agriculture by adopting smart solutions, new technologies in order to make the difference in terms of sustainability of water resources in agriculture, but also uh, regarding the food production. Please, the next. Uh, the smart farming concept is a new way to do agriculture, which implies the uh, use, uh, the adoption of new technologies like IoT, GPS, robotics, uh, uh, proximal sensing techniques uh, that can uh, be able, can assist the farmers in terms of uh, utilization of water resources. So here are some examples that we can find easily in the application in agriculture of use of sensors to control, to identify the main processes that act within the complex soil plant and atmosphere systems within an agricultural context. Please, the next. 
So uh, in, the, in the recent years, uh, the agricultural sector obtained uh, um, a lot of uh, advantages from the adoption of new technologies. If we think, for example, to the necessity to identify in a correct way the, uh, the irrigation water supply, uh, so the use of soil moisture sensor, for example, is, uh, um, uh, is uh, extended to main uh, to a lot of uh, um, so agricultural farms. And uh, uh, those simple, very low cost sensor are able to identify correctly the, the, the dynamics of the water relation in the soil and to connect this information in a wireless modality, for example, directly to the farmer in order to give her uh, or to, to the farmers an advice on uh, how much water distribute and when irrigate. But it's also important to introduce a new sensor that can be able, for example, to identify um, important physiological indicators like, for example, the stem water potential that is a proxy of the availability of water resource in a plant and is, a, is a strictly related uh, to the evapotranspiration, the transpiration fluxes. Uh, please, the next. The next week. So um, it's important uh, to introduce uh, in the agricultural con uh, context uh, the concept that the real time observation are uh, fundamental for diagnostic needs, for example, to eliminate, to avoid, but also to mitigate water deficiency, but also for uh, abiotic and biotic stress detection. Please, the next. So uh, um, I uh, had the pleasure to introduce uh, in this uh, uh, so very short talk about the smart tools in agriculture, some ideas, some focus on the possibility to adopt, to adopt uh, new strategies in agriculture, but also new technologies. For example, regarding the possibility to use new strategies, it's, it's very important uh, um, the concept that is uh, very well known now of deficit irrigation, that allow to save um, uh, so a great uh, high percentage of water. Um, for example, in this case, I have represented the partial root zone drying that is a very important and uh, also new strategy that uh, um, so the, 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 the strategies imply the wetting of the root zone in an alternate way. Um, so an half of the root zone is wet and then the other half is uh, keep dry and uh, the system is alternated in time. So this uh, so modality of uh, use of water um, determine an important biophysical and hormonal response to the plant and allows about, for example, in our experience, also 50% of, of water saving uh, regarding the irrigation volumes. But also the possibility in agriculture culture to adopt the proximal sensing technique to map important vegetation indicators, like, for example, the normalized different vegetation index that is a proxy of the biomass, of the photosynthetic active biomass, and it is also a proxy of the um, crop productivity. Also, ge geophysical techniques uh, like the electrical resistivity tomography uh, on your uh, right can be applied to identify in a perfect way the infiltration front during an irrigation phase. Uh, so the electrical resistivity of, of a soil is, is uh, related uh, to the uh, water, uh, to the moisture, the soil water, the soil moisture. So uh, we can identify size of the water dynamics in the system. So the next. And uh, to, uh, to conclude, uh, so also um, it's uh, important to develop in agriculture new sensor, low cost sensor that can be able to detect um, the um, water stress conditions, for example, the monitoring with uh, 
low cost sensor of the canopy temperature can be able to, um, to uh, obtain to determine important uh, water stress indicators like the crop water stress index that can be used to identify eventually uh, eventual crop water stress condition in this case uh, to mitigate the effect of the uh, not sufficient uh, water supply please the next and to conclude, I uh, would like to, uh, so, uh, uh, so to talk about the possibility to apply, but it is a very well-known technology of the satellite remote sensing in agriculture. The satellite remote sensing is a, a very well-known technology that has application for the, in different contexts and in particular in agriculture. Uh, the satellite remote sensing is uh, uh, very well used to uh, classify the irrigated area that in some parts of the southern Europe is a, a very important challenge. And also to uh, classify the crop type and the land use and to estimate the crop evapotranspiration and the crop quality. And here you can see uh, some example of the remote sense sensing application to detect all the variables that I have uh, indicated before. So I have concluded my part on uh, uh, agriculture and uh, now I pass uh, the hand to Juan Miguel Ramirez Cuesta to discuss about the barriers related to adoption of the smart, smart food. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simona. Uh, I would like to join also the, the congratulations made by, by Simona for, for the invitation uh, to participate in, in this seminar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Juan Miguel Ramirez Cuesta, and uh, during these 10 minutes, more, more or less, I will uh, present uh, the main barriers uh, to the introduction of uh, the smart tools uh, to cope with water scarcity. After the presentation given by Nelson Carrizo and Simona Consoli, it has been uh, evidenced that uh, the smart solutions uh, are uh, are useful tools for for coping with water scarcity. But uh, however, there it's it's also true that that there are uh, several several barriers that prevent the successful uh, adoption of this of this kind of smart tools. Thus, it, it results critical to increase our, our understanding of these specific, uh, specific barriers that will lay that uh, the design and the implementation of intervention that uh, can uh, overcome, uh, overcome them. These uh, barriers uh, can be classified in function of the uh, sector they affect, uh, finding, uh, therefore, uh, economic uh, barriers, institutional or regulatory uh, barriers, or, or organizational or social barriers, uh, consumer or market barriers, and behavioral uh, or physiological barriers. Next. The, the following diagram uh, shows the, the flux of knowledge between the technological uh, supply side uh, on, on your left and the uh, technology demand side on, on your right. This, it is important uh, to know that uh, the flux is reciprocal uh, among both sides and so uh, the barriers that are marked uh, in red in, in, this, in this diagram affect to both, uh, both sides. Uh, in the following slides, uh, I will differentiate among the barriers uh, experienced by the technology providers and those uh, experienced by uh, the technology uh, users. Uh, regarding the first one, uh, next, the barriers experienced by the technology providers, we find principally five uh, main uh, barriers. But uh, before describing these barriers, uh, let me explain a little bit the, the, content, uh, the content distribution of this slide. On the, the upper part, uh, you have a list with the main barriers, uh, whereas in the lower part, there are real, uh, real opinions uh, from, uh, from smart tools involved user. 
obtained from uh, surveys performed in uh, Netherlands, France, uh, Italy, and Switzerland. From a scientific literature review, we identify uh, that technology providers uh, reported a, a range of barriers uh, that uh, inhibited their ability uh, to sell uh, and also, also to, to distribute their technological in, innovation. And the first one is the, the difficulty in proving uh, the value of a, of, the, of a certain product, uh, which uh, sometimes requires a complex uh, and, and expensive uh, scientific or impact uh, studies. The lack of knowledge of and access uh, to capital or investment is uh, another barrier that uh, avoids the expansion and, uh, and other uh, business objectives uh, requiring financing. Uh, the third barrier uh, relates to the uh, unsympathetic regulatory landscape uh, referred to the policy and uh, regulatory landscape, uh, which limited uh, their, their ability to successfully diffuse their, their technological innovation. Also, uh, technological provide, uh, technology providers already identify uh, as a barrier uh, the expensive price of the products and the uh, long return on investment times. And finally, the last barrier I would like to highlight uh, related to the uh, to technology uh, provider uh, are the difficulties found in identifying and reaching uh, potential customers. Next. On the other hand, uh, we uh, find the, uh, the demand uh, the demand side barriers that refers to the to, to those barriers experienced by technology uh, technology users and prevent or uh, inhibit them from uh, adopting a smart tool solution. Next. Among the, the main barriers uh, affecting to this, uh, to this side, uh, I have selected these uh, eight different barriers. The first one uh, refers to the low uh, awareness of uh, smart agriculture uh, and the uh, inaccessible languages. Since, uh, as example, many, many potential users uh, at the farm level only uh, speak the, the mother tongue, uh, which means that uh, technology providers from, from different part, uh, parts of, of Europe may find, uh, may find it difficult to uh, access and communicate with farm level users uh, outside uh, their native countries. Moreover, uh, there are high costs and long return on investment periods, and in addition, potential users uh, noted that they needed uh, assurances over the impacts of uh, technologies, which is uh, quite uh, quite difficult with uh, when coping with uh, these uh, new new products. Additionally, some, some users uh, highlighted the uh, inconsistencies uh, between the national and, and European Union level policies, complaining uh, also about the, the fact that research and development and policies uh, do not uh, match to the uh, on the ground reality. Mm, difficulties on, on reaching uh, and training farmers and also the, the low consumer demand have been uh, pointed out uh, also as, as important barriers by, by, by this side. And finally, uh, last uh, but not least, uh, another critical issue is the unequal distribution of cost benefits across the, the, the uh, supply chains. Uh, since uh, many of the economic uh, benefits uh, are located uh, downstream uh, with consumer products, companies, or retailers, whilst uh, many of the environmental or climate benefits uh, are located uh, on the farm. Next. And uh, as conclusion, uh, let me highlight the main ideas uh, derived from, from the previous presentation of uh, Nelson and, and Simona, and also from this presentation. 
And the first idea I would like to highlight is that the, the development of smart tools for coping with uh, current water scarcity scenario reduce waste and mitigate the gap between water demand and uh, availability, allowing the redesign of the uh, production processes. Uh, smart utilities uh, will improve uh, the daily operation and management of the, the urban water systems, uh, allowing uh, to optimize uh, the, the water and energy use, which help to uh, reduce uh, the impacts of water scarcity. Moreover, uh, sustainable use of water uh, in agriculture intended on the uh, one side to uh, reduce the water demand uh, and the environmental impacts due to uh, over exploitation and uh, on the other side to increase the water use efficiency and for that uh, it's critical to, to increase uh, irrigation efficiency through the uh, technological development uh, for example uh, of the irrigation systems and uh, the adoption of innovative management strategies as the case of uh, deficit irrigation strategies and, and innovative sensor for the soil plan and field continuum monitoring. Next. And regarding the barriers, uh, only highlight that uh, the identification is uh, critical uh, to provide useful information for industry and policymakers uh, to increase the adoption levels of uh, environmentally uh, friendly smart farming technologies. And that's uh, all from, from my side. Thank you very much, um, Eva. Thank you, Juan Miguel, uh, Simona and Nelson. Uh, I think all of these presentations really gave us a good uh, overview of the different elements of smart tools and the, the different barriers that could uh, could exist um, uh, when, when trying to introduce those. So now we are going to move on to the panel discussion, uh, which will be moderated by Juan Miguel. And uh, for the beginning of the, present, uh, the panel discussion, I think we will just go around and ask uh, our participants to present themselves and then we have a couple of questions and I would also like to ask the audience who we have about over 50 people on the zoom call uh, feel free to type in your questions into the chat and I will be able to uh, call them out to the panel and also we are monitoring on social media if there are any questions from LinkedIn or uh, or YouTube we will be able to ask to the question so I wish you all a very enriching and interesting discussion for the panel, Juan Miguel. Uh, you need to unmute yourself first. Yeah, no, uh, sorry. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for being here and to, to join us uh, today. And uh, the first one, uh, uh, in presenting their, they, 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 in giving us their words, uh, if I'm not wrong, will be uh, uh, Alexis de Kurtzove uh, from Silent Inc. Uh, so uh, Alexis, the, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you very much, Juan Miguel. Um, yeah, my name is Alexis de Kerkov. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I lead the client sustainability organizations for Europe on the behalf of Xylem. Xylem is a global solution suppliers with a, a broad range of equipment, softwares, digital solutions, and, and, and uh, services aiming at uh, supporting utilities, building services, and also industrial users in managing water. So um, it's great to be here. Um, I look forward to the conversations on uh, the utilizations of smart tools. And uh, I pass it back to you, Juan Miguel. Juan Miguel. Unmute. unmute. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the, the other uh, the other uh, panelist that uh, uh, is is with us is uh, Ruben Fernandez from from Aguas uh, Energia de Porto. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ruben, for for being with us today. Well, thank you for the invitation. So, yeah, uh, I'm I'm the the, the CEO of uh, of this public water utility that operates at a municipal level. So, in the city of Porto, in Portugal. Um, well, uh, 
what we do different when compared to other utilities uh, is the fact that we we do manage and i i've been saying this uh, over the past few months in in some in some conferences that we do manage the entire <laughs> urban water cycle so it's not only about wastewater and water supply it's also about rivers and streams the, the seafront area waiting water quality and so on and on so um I think that's a good introduction uh, in, in introduction for now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ruben. And uh, last, we have also with uh, with us uh, Katia Pinto uh, from Smart Farm uh, Collab. Uh, thank you very much uh, again for for being with us. So thank you, Juan, and good afternoon to everyone. And many thanks also for the invitation. It's uh, indeed a great pleasure to be here and an honor uh, and be together with this uh, discussion panel. So as Juan said, my name is Katia Pinta. I'm the executive director of uh, Smart Farm Collab. Only in few words, what is this Smart Farm Collab? So we are a collaborative laboratory um, and a non-profit association based on Torres Vedras, so in Portugal, nearby Lisbon. And our mission is to boost what we call the digital innovation uh, in agriculture. So we act uh, basically in the primary sector, in different agro sectors. And if I can resume, Smart Farm Collab is what we call a quadruple helix innovation entity. So we have different partners that compose or members that compose our organization. And our main mission is uh, as a, labor a collaborative laboratory to transfer what we call the knowledge and also the technology into this productive sector. So if I can resume, we uh, bring this innovation and as actor, a facilitator through a multi-sectoral approach between different entities. So very, in few words, maybe not so few. <laughs> Thank you very much, Katia. So uh, after the presentation that we have uh, uh, seen today, um, I have some question that maybe we can uh, discuss together. Uh, I don't know, Eva, what do you think if it's now the time for, for, for the question? So the, the first question that uh, I would like to discuss uh, with, with all of you is, uh, in your opinion, what are the key issues uh, or hardless in, in adopting uh, smart tools in, in urban uh, wastewater, agriculture, uh, and, and industrial sectors? And uh, also, uh, if you consider, or what is your opinion uh, about the fact that these barriers vary per region, or uh, for instance, uh, these barriers vary between continents, Europe, USA, uh, also India. So, so the, this is the question. I don't know if, uh, if you have, uh, what's your opinion about that? I can jump in if you want, Juan Miguel. Uh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Um, and you know, the the, the the topic was already quite broadly uh, discussed by yourself in the in the previous uh, presentation. But um, I'd like I'd like maybe to enhance a couple of uh, additional few barriers that we have been able to to detect, especially along with. Um, the IWA associations that we have partnered with to to elaborate this this research, um, we see that on top of all the barriers that we have been discussing, legacy of infrastructure is something that is really important and quite often a barrier um, to to utilities. and And I will reflect to what Ruben said because we're not talking about just wastewater here. We're talking about the management of all the water cycles. Looking at um, of course, collections of sewers and stormwater, treatment of that wastewater, but then also productions of drinking water and the distributions of that drinking water to the water users. Um, and so the, the infrastructure is, is really important, the legacy, and there is a lot of poor interoperability of uh, the legacy data collections, if there is that data, uh, lots of sub um, systems controlling uh, separate entities. And so, so we see um, that as a critical point. And you can imagine that across regions, it varies even more. Um, in, in all the Europe and all the Americas, let's say USA, Western, Western world, where the infrastructure is old, there is a lot of um, assets to being managed. Um, there is a lot of complexity in retrofitting that 
and build a technology stack that can interoperate everything at once. However, when you look at uh, regions that are heavily investing into greenfields uh, solution, um, and let's focus or give an example out of China here, um, we understand that when they build a new plant or a new structure, they can start from scratch their technology stack uh, to build or use smart tools in the best way. And we see with our um, within Exilem, we see uh, our Chinese clients able to really take the most of digital solutions uh, in a very quick and, and fast manner. So I think that's to me, a, a point that is very critical, and we see a lot of discrepancies across regions, um, that, uh, that is key. One quick addition is the labor skills and the culture. Within our utilities, we understand that we have a large audience of operators that have a long experience of hands-on operations on assets. Now, the shift towards digital solutions, smart tools, requires skills that are not that I mean, that intuitive sometimes and not that easy to take on on top of everything else. And so uh, making a change in a structure uh, as big as an utility is is really tough. And um, the key is really to partner together and get that um, really well implemented through education, through examples, through references, to peer discussions and so on. So I'm going to stop here to give time for, for the others. but. Um, Really interesting. Well, I can go next if you allow me <laughs> to. Uh, I will probably introduce here another topic, uh, and I could probably tackle this question from, from the, the perspective of, of wastewater reuse uh, in a context of water scarcity. Uh, I, I think that uh, if the problem of water scarcity varies from region to region, then the same applies to the nature of the solutions to, to, to the problem, uh, as well as to the, rel to the relevance uh, and, and nature of smart tools that we may use uh, in this regard. And uh, for instance, uh, in Portugal, uh, at the moment, and uh, in particular in the southern regions of the country, we are facing the, the, the challenge of availability of water resources for household and industrial uses, also for agricultural uses. Uh, I'm not focusing so much on agricultural uses because we don't have those uses in, in Porto. But, um, uh, in Porto, uh, which is located in, in the northern region of Portugal, this problem is not as acute as in other regions, uh, at least at this moment, uh, maybe it will be uh, over the next few years or decades. Uh, nevertheless, in Aguas in Rio do Porto, uh, we have several projects and strategies, and most of them based on smart tools, for the efficient and responsible use of water. Uh, and one of these projects uh, refers to the design and implementation of a pilot project for wastewater reuse, nam namely in non-potable applications such as gardens, cubic spaces, etc. And uh, within this particular context, um, smart tools are absolutely key for more efficient and rational use of a quite costly uh, sub product such as, such, such as the treated water, uh, as well as for monitoring and, uh, and remote managing of newly built wastewater reuse systems, because at the moment we are starting to build our, our purple pipes. So, um, and so this is especially key uh, if our goal is to ensure that uh, the energy that we need to run the system is kept to a minimum, uh, because as you know, usually wastewater treatment plants, they are located uh, at a lower level. Uh, and uh, in order to reuse this kind of water, we'll need to, to implement uh, pumping systems and uh, water tanks and so on. So we need, we need to be quite uh, rational uh, in the way uh, we we activate all these pieces uh, of the puzzle, and that would be my my contribution so far <laughs> regarding this theme and introducing and in, in, introducing another topic, which is the the reuse uh, of uh, of wastewater. Thank you, thank you, Ruben. And Katia, I don't know if you have any 
yeah, if I can, yeah, <laughs> I, I would like maybe. So, um, so maybe give a little bit the perspective from the agriculture sector and also complement uh, the presentation from Juan that was amazing and also pointed here the barriers in the adoption of these uh, smart tools. But for example, one of, for sure, the legacy infrastructures is really important but also the communication. And for example, when we look into the agriculture sector, we see that, and this is great, we have so many smart tools that sometimes the difficulty uh, from the markets is to choose the best one. So adapt the best one into the needs from the farmers. And for sure, when we have also a smart tool, the question is how, how can we use it in a, in a very good way? We can have a strong, let's say smart tool, but sometimes if we don't know how to use it, it will be very difficult to apply it, this technology for the needs in the agriculture sectors, for example. Price of technology is also uh, uh, here a barrier, I would say, and very relevant for this sector in particular, that is agriculture. For example, taking the, the example of Portugal, and in particular the region that we are located, when we look into the, the agriculture, sorry, for this sector, we have or still be very fragmented. For example, um, the farmer, the farms are very in small in size. Uh, the age of farmers is high. Uh, we have different levels of digital maturity among the, these farmers. So we know for sure these uh, the barriers uh, that we have already that are pointed here. Uh, we know that, for example, the accessibility to solutions and communications in remote areas are very difficult. The confidence of the technologies also is pointed here. The knowledge of the solutions and the motivation in terms of the sustainability and here the social, economic and environmental. So if you allow, how, how can we get uh, over from here, right? So um, how can we take out these, uh, these uh, barriers? So for sure, we need to develop or adapt because the market, we have different solutions. So adopt probably the digital technological solutions into the accordance for the needs of in particular of these farmers. And so customize what we call the solutions to their needs. And also it's important that these solutions are affordable to get uh, an inclusive, let's say, uh, um, uh, inclusive solutions and not exclusive solutions, uh, because this is really important when we have this uh, sector. And also to, correct, to employ, implement them correctly, uh, we need to give what we call the support to farmers uh, for these end users. That means that we need to prepare also our society for the adoption of these digital technologies. And here is a little bit the transition to digital systems, but I think that these are the two important uh, points that I would like to highlight is that accessibility and also the support in particular for the agriculture um, side that uh, are the main difficulties that we are identifying right here. Thank you. Thank you all of you for your, uh, for your interest in discussion. Let's uh, move to the second, uh, the second question. The second question, uh, I would like to ask uh, Ruben Fernandez, uh, but also uh, it's open to, to the, 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 the rest of the panelists. And the second question refers to uh, how can we uh, advance more in the application of uh, in, in digital twins? Well, uh, I was listening to, to the comments of, uh, of my colleagues and I was thinking <laughs> that perhaps Agos in Gia do Porto is a bit lucky because we don't, we don't, at the moment, at this level of maturity, we don't, we don't see many barriers in adopting smart tools in our, in our networks. And uh, having said that, uh, yes, with the smart tools that we have already in place, we have been able to, to, to create a digital twin, uh, which is called H2 Portal, um, and uh, which is considered to be a reference at, at both national and international levels. Um, this is a digital twin for the entire water cycle of the city. So I told you before, it's not only about drinking water, it's not only about wastewater, it's about 
all the water, uh, every single drop of water that falls within the boundaries of our city. Um, this digital twin, uh, it supports the full system operation management. It allows for real-time monitoring and it enhances decision-making processes. Uh, and um, I could talk a little bit about the development of this, of this digital twin, which consisted on integrating all existing available data from different internal sources, including all those that uh, uh, are coming from uh, these smart tools. Um, establishing rules on how our water system works, uh, as well as on how it should work in order to be more efficient, uh, and integrating all, all of this with external sources of information uh, in order to create what we call an intelligent core uh, capable of making predictions uh, and increasing ef uh, efficiency. And um, just the last uh, thing that I should add is that uh, uh, the work with the digital twin is never complete. Okay, the digital twin is is a is a ever evolving uh, thing that we have uh, in the company. Uh, we recognize that we still have a long way to go, even though we know that uh, we move forward <laughs> uh, in a in a quite fast pace at the moment. And we can see the positive impact from the implementation of this of this digital twin in our company, in, especially in the context of water stress and water scarcity, because it's really helping us to 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 promote a more rational use of water uh, in these times. Uh, and I think I would stop uh, here so I can <laughs> give the floor to my colleagues. Thank you, thank you, Ruben. Uh, Alexis, Katia, uh, it's your turn. Katia, you want to go first? Okay, okay. Let's let's go into agriculture. Uh, maybe come back a little bit, Ruben. Uh, I wish I could say that in agriculture is the same as in the Agos de Porto because it's not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I know that in Portugal we are in a very good shape on that regard and in that particular sector. Yeah. So you are really, really lagging behind. And so there is uh, a lot of work to be done, but exactly. Exactly. I don't want to, <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's another world, let's say. So regarding the question from Juan so yeah so the, these digital twins are really important in the way that we can bring to the smart farming these new levels or new levels of productivity and also sustainability um, and then by using them what we can do we can stimulate integrate test monitor for example uh, across the farm management uh, tools and improve what we call the planification of these uh, end control for sure planif planify end control daily basis of the farm operations and also learn from all of these and integrate the the, 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 the into the process new uh, not skills but new adoptions but and this is my opinion uh, for in the case of agriculture and for this digital transition is really also important to take in consideration uh, what, an holistic digital system and why because in agriculture, we can't only consider the field, we can only consider data and action into the decision support system. We need to le learn also from the field. And how can we learn? Uh, we need to include in this whole formula equation, the farmer knowledge, uh, because the farmer is indeed um, a main actor, uh, if, you if you can say like this, and he have a deeper knowledge what is really going on. So it can also help us to put into the system new equations, new formulas that can be useful. Because I think, uh, in the end, what we want, what we want to to be, is useful. Um, and so this is my, as I said before, this is my opinion, my perspective, and it's what we are doing here from the agriculture side into the smart farm collab. 
Can I just add something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that it's absolutely key that uh, we we advance uh, uh, in the digitalization, in the use of uh, of, uh, of smart tools in agriculture, in the creation of digital twins. Because uh, when we are talking about water loss in Portugal, uh, the agricultural sector is one of the sectors in which these losses are the greatest. So, so if we could do that, we could solve part of the problem related to water scarcity in Portugal. Part, <laughs> only part, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. Thanks. Um, and, and, you know, there is so much already said here. I mean, it's quite, it's quite fantastic uh, to hear and I couldn't agree more with what was said. Um, I, when we talked about, when we talk about water scarcity, definitely um, coming back to what you just said, Ruben, water losses is is one of the first, to me, to my mind, uh, topic that comes in in, in place, uh, especially in the distribution system. And so there are digital solutions, including advanced metrology, infrastructure, AMI, uh, uh, digital twin uh, to cover, but also uh, inline leak detections and condition assessments of the distribution networks are all these solutions that um, that find fantastic uh, applications. But again, how to accelerate their adoptions? How to make sure that they become available uh, to the hands of operators so that you know they, they they can truly get the full benefits of digital. And I'll come back to this report uh, one more times from, from IWA and, and Ruben, don't laugh, but the first point that is set up or for accelerating adoption is to set the ambitions at the CEO level. So I appreciate your word about, you know, I was a Porto being well set up, but a lot comes from the, the top management uh, to build a strategy uh, around digital. It has to come from that uh, core uh, part of the organization so that you can drive down an innovation, uh, a culture of innovations across the organization, a mindset, and then build the digital ecosystems because it's not only for operating water or addressing solutions for water management, but it comes, digital comes in all the administration um, of the utility, for example, in this case, so that um, you know the users become more familiar with it, not only for operating water, but also for handling the daily business of, of work. Um, develop the data architecture, build the digital roadmap. Those are critical steps that uh, will, will lead to, to the improvement. Now, coming back to what was you said about the agriculture uh, from Katya, the, the, there is indeed a very important aspect to understand that the the water scarcity can needs to be addressed uh, from from an overall perspective of what's possible with digital solutions around the watershed around the all overall application um, because there's so much data sources from water abstractions from water uh, generations and productions, drinking water in this case, and the distributions all the way to the point of use, a public point of use or a, a large industrial uh, water users. There is so much that needs to be understood um, and an overall perspective from a digital twin taking, um, taking absorbing the data from several systems and building a new information that becomes so valuable to the management that they can truly take decisions in investments on where are the critical parts of, of the systems, where they, they have the largest losses, for example, or the, loss, the, the highest use in energy, um, because all that is connected, right? And I, I mean, it's, it's um, to me, um, the top-down approach is very critical. Um, I would not want to pass the message that it's the only one. There's a lot that can be done by making the operators more familiar with potential solutions from the bottom up. You have a lot of assets. How can we optimize the handling of those assets? Um, asset management within such infrastructure is used. And so we need a quick, a, a nice balance between the top-down approach, but also the bottom up um, in terms of like how to 
better manage the daily business on operations. So I'll, I'll stop here, but thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I feel that we could, uh, we could be talking about that and discussing about that all the day. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have a, a limited time, so, so let's uh, move to the next, uh, the next question. And the next question is, uh, what do you think about the fact uh, that in, in the agriculture and, and, and the urban uh, wastewater sectors, uh, where uh, do you think or where do you feel uh, that uh, smart tools uh, are uh, being more adopted? So now I don't know, maybe, maybe Katia, can you, can you start this time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Again, agriculture, <laughs> 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 that, 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 that I'm representing, but I think that is quite uh, um, transposable for other sectors. So, for example, in, the, in this case, one of the main challenges, this is not new what I'm going to tell. So um, the challenge and I would say also the mission. Um, so nowadays we have to produce for sure more using less. And when we say using less, using less what? Using less natural uh, resources the water, the soil, uh, knowing to, to apply correctly the age inputs, and thus to perform efficiency the use of these resources. So by using them or by applying correcting them, uh, we will get also, we need to valorize the product. So I mean the production because we are consumers, we want better, but at the same time, guarantee the profitability of the system and the profitability will be from agriculture for other sectors. So clearly we need to answer and come back a little bit for, for, for the agendas that we have on the table. So for these European green deals, and so on. And for sure, we have to apply, and this is urgent, is we have to apply these smart tools um, to contribute achievably and to achieve these, these goals with SOCIS. But also, we need to create this access to digital, uh, digital resources, as we said before. So we need to uh, not kill, but we need to compact these uh, barriers that we have currently to perform this intensification and but sustainable of the agriculture. So for the technologies, um, as uh, in the presentation of Simona, for example, she pointed different ones. So we have these sensing, these monitoring devices, advanced analytics, smart equipments, and so on. Uh, and when we can use these technologies, for example, um, I would say for monitor the water using different approaches of the plant from the soil, having these climatic conditions, even the plant, monitor the soil quality, predict diseases, monitor, for example, the fruit quality. I saw also in a presentation before the ripening, the, the estimation. So I would say that the system uh, will not be only in one direction, it will be multiple one. And so these tools can be applied in different ones, but the main goal are always the same. So producing more, using less, valorize the products and the profitability of the agriculture supply chain. Okay, are we applying? Possible, no comment? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so <laughs> no, but uh, um, I agree with your vision. It's a very so. Let me say a little bit holistic. So I think that so I'm a researcher, and um, I'm a researcher, and I show you uh, probably a uh, so too much scientific tools. But I think that if you want to given advices to the farmers. It is important to give them a very uh, easy to understand suggestions, advices, but that are to be very strongly supported by the political research. So if I, so I think that the farmers uh, um, now, so that probably the traditional paradigm of agriculture is uh, probably, so we are, we are in a, in a, in a in a different uh, model now. So we have the expert farmer now. 
uh, they ask us to have support in using the technology. So, so for example, uh, there is a, so the drones, the use of proximal sensing is very so well, uh, well, uh, uh, no, they, they want to have this kind of support to monitor, to, to, to do a zoning of their uh, agricultural farm. And this is a very important. So I think that we, we are um, in a, in a higher level respect to the past. So I think that the farmer is more expert. So the, the direction is the so it's not a, uh, we have not a sole direction because uh, it's obvious that in Sicily, for example, so the problem of the availability of water resource for agriculture is uh, really important. So we uh, have so about uh, 300, 400 millimeters of rainfall during the wall uh, year in the internal area of Sicily. So, uh, so the agriculture should be supported and needs uh, to, to use well these scarce water resources. So, and uh, our way to do is, uh, um, so some advices that I have put in my presentation, for example, the adoption of deficit irrigation strategies that is not so far from the, um, so from the uh, desire of the of the farmer, because uh, so I I work uh, on deficit uh, irrigation strategy since uh, so many years uh, since 2009 in uh, different farms and and now the farmers that are interested to be part of this project are a lot. So they uh, need to have information and advices on how use well the water resources. Another point is the value of the water. So I think that the value of water is completely, di completely different uh, probably in uh, our countries. For example, here in Sicily, the farmers don't pay water. They pay to have water by declaring their irrigation area. So in this case, so uh, let me say that uh, water has no value <laughs> because uh, if they have water, because they pay so so um, very very few uh, respect to pay uh, at the demand. So they can use, uh, overuse the water that they receive from the different agencies in applying the irrigation context. Another important element is the possibility, you uh, mentioned this, the possibility of uh, use uh, wastewater in agriculture. This is a very important uh, alternative of water sources. Uh, mm, mm, more where uh, the, the ability of traditional conventional water resources is scarce. But the, the, I, mm, I, I don't introduce in my presentation the uh, wastewater use because I think that is a politically related problem, a politically related uh, so solution, because it depends the possibility to adopt wastewater in agriculture strictly depend if uh, your uh, country uh, has the, 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 the possibility by applying uh, legislation, regulation to do this on the basis of environmental prospect. For example, in Italy, the possibility to adopt uh, treated, treated wastewater in agriculture is very, very scarce because uh, we have to follow a so strict strict uh, legislation. Uh, so the parameter that a wastewater has to, 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 to analyze, to uh, give the possibility to the farmers to use wastewater are higher respect to the potable water. So, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, so the, the, the costs are really high. So I think that the wastewater uh, problem, the wastewater, the wastewater possibility, that is a, a real possibility because uh, wastewater is continuously produced um, instead of the, uh, so the availability that we have by rainfall. And but it's a, a political related problem. So someone in the chat say uh, if we have introduced the concept of the nature-based solution. So, so the nature-based solution was introduced as a chapter in the white paper, was a, a very important element of the white paper. But so it's not, it's not easy to, uh, to put uh, these solutions, these green technologies within the regulation of the single country, in my opinion. Thank you, Simona. Thank you uh, for giving your, your, your interesting opinion about, uh, about the, the agricultural wastewater use. Uh, 
Now I will know a little bit more about uh, the urban wastewater sector, uh, maybe Ruben uh, or Alexis. Uh, okay, I can talk a little bit. I think that uh, much has been said. I'd like just to comment on, on what has been told before about the agricultural sector. It's not only a problem uh, in other Southern European problems, the, the, use, the reuse of wastewater. It's also a problem in Portugal. We also have a very strict uh, legislation that does not allow us to, to immediately use this kind of water. But it's not only about that, it's also about social acceptance uh, of this kind of water. Because when we are talking about farmers, as far as I know, uh, they, they can be, um, they can present some, some barriers to to the to the adoption of uh, of these solutions because uh, some of them they know about these issues related to microplastics about uh, related to other emerging pollutants we know that uh, we cannot get rid of this even when we when we uh, transform our our treated uh, wastewater into class a um, uh, re re reused water uh, and uh, there's a problem and that emphasizes the fact that that uh, there will be a problem of social acceptance uh, and also there will be a problem regarding the, the cost, the tariff that we can apply to, to this kind of water in other uses. But, well, getting back to, to the perspective of, uh, of water utility, well, uh, I'd say that uh, there's one aspect that uh, I think Alexis already uh, talked about it, which is uh, the balance between investing in our business as usual or being more disruptive or innovative. Uh, and I think this is a big challenge because in a city su uh, su such as Portugal, in which the pipelines are very, very old, because the city itself is very old, we could fall under the temptation of, of saying, okay, let's just invest in the rehabilitation of our pipelines because, well, <laughs> the scenario is, is, is quite not so good when, when, when we look at it. But we know, uh, at least from, from, from the top management, that the solution is, uh, is not only about rehabilitation, it's also about uh, how efficient we, we are. Uh, and that's why, uh, at least in Aguas in Rio do Porto, uh, we, our strategy is very much uh, focused on innovation, digitalization, uh, the use of this kind of tools so we can be more efficient, so we can predict where pipe bursts are going to, to occur, so we can have a more proactive action instead of reactive action, so we can reduce by uh, in this way, the, the water losses and, uh, and the level of our non-revenue water and so on and on. Um, I think that in the case uh, of a water utility and in the case of Aguas Energia do Porto, uh, we have the problem solved for the, for the drinking water system because, well, it's completely uh, digitalized. It's completely. It's full of smart tools. Uh, I have no way to, no other way to to put it. Uh, but uh, when we are talking about the other systems, and particularly when we are, we are talking about streams and rivers, we know that the, the, the technologies that uh, that are on the market at the moment they are not very mature. Uh, and uh, even though we are still, we are already paving the way in order to in order to put Put some sensors uh, and what so on uh, in in our streams and rivers, uh, and we are talking sensors to detect, in particular, for instance, uh, pollution, uh, illegal discharges of of industrial water in our streams and rivers. Uh, we know that these solutions uh, they still need to be a little bit more mature. So I think that the barriers regarding the adoption of smart tools are in in other systems besides, <laughs> except uh, the the drinking water system where where tools uh, well uh, you, you 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 can find them in the market and uh, and for sure they they will they will. Uh, bring to your utility some sort of level of efficiency. So. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Alexis. I, I would love to, to, to add a, 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 a perceptions on this, if you allow me with, uh, with a bit more time, Eva. I hope that we have the time for it. Um, I'd like to, you know, looking at the questions of like, how can, where, where do we see smart tools being more adopted or uh, taking, taking rooms within, within portfolios? Um, I'd like to, let's say, discuss the concept of agility of the smart tools. Um, and, and why do I say that is because in Europe, like across the world, we are in a massive transformations, massive changes are occurring today everywhere. Um, first, in Europe, for example, regulations are changing when it comes to water uh, for utilities, but also for irrigations. Uh, the drinking water directive came in two years ago. We are revising the wastewater uh, treatment directive now. Uh, the energy, uh, um, the IED is being revised as well, industrial efficiency directive. So on top of that comes a massive energy crisis all around Europe. On top of that comes climate change, which is going to push even further water scarcity to its limits, in addition to like severe flooding events happening in other regions, which is to be managed as well. So when we put ourselves in the feed of anyone managing water, like an utility or an agriculture, they need a way to cope with all those needs that they need to tackle, to address, to serve, to keep their service, their services affordable and have a high productivity on, on, on their industry, like agriculture. From my knowledge, I don't know any great invest in gray infrastructure, like a regular mechanical, electrical, civil engineering project that will be able to adapt as quickly as a digital solutions when it comes to adding a layer of um, limitations, boundaries. Um, imagine today you need to regulate your tariff in the water distributions. Great, a digital twin can forecast how it could be happening um, based on, on historical data. On top of that, you want to optimize energy use or carbon emissions within that systems. It is possible to add boundaries really, I mean, quickly, yes, I mean, it takes time, but much faster than having to redesign and reinvent uh, a gray infrastructure to support or adapt to it. So this concept of agility of digital solutions, digital twin, is something that will drive even more adoptions within the applications of water management, agriculture. And uh, at this point, um, the public and the users are demanding for more data. Um, data transparency becomes critical. Uh, people want to know the quality and the, the, the quality and the quantity of water used, for example, on their tap, in their home, in their buildings, to understand are they efficient. Uh, the same for energy. Um, so I think all those drivers together makes smart tools not an option anymore. It's the first solutions to come up on any type of tender project funding that needs to come out of a government, a member states, or even a municipality, um, just to be more resilient to the future. I think, thank, thank you, Alexis. Uh, you didn't take that much time as I anticipated. So we still have about 10 minutes from the, from the seminar. So I would like to call out some questions from the, from the audience. And there was a question Simona also referred to, which is um, about nature-based solutions in combination with smart tools, which I think it's a very unique and, and important question. In our white paper, we also highlighted that we don't see any um, single uh, silver bullet solution to water scarcity. They're always going to be a combination of different solutions. So I think it's an interesting question. What um, do you all think about the combination of smart tools, digitalization, and, and nature-based solutions? Um, I wonder who would like to start? Yes, I think that is uh, really important to introduce uh, this, this uh fundamental concept of the nature-based solution uh, within the management of the 
water resources of the different, but not only water, but water and energy uh, for the different uh, users. Uh, for example, so in the urban context, uh, the introduction of the natural based solutions uh, integrated with uh, obviously new technologies, uh, the monitoring is really important in order, for example, to, uh, to mitigate uh, the the flood, uh, the flood uh, problem uh, that are, for example, here in uh, southern Italy, is, uh, uh, so we, we changed, we are changing our climatic condition towards the tropicalization of the climate, uh, and uh, we need to have uh, uh, so measure in order to mitigate. So the natural based solution in uh, the urban context, in my opinion, could be uh, should be integrated uh, in the uh, so regulation, in the plan and the regulation of the municipalities. Uh, for example, the green roof, the rain garden, but also, for example, the constructed wetlands are example of um, nature-based solution that can be serve also the agricultural sector. For example, in the European regulation for wastewater treatment, the constructed wetlands are introduced as tertiary treatment to, uh, so to have water available for uh, the agricultural sector in order to promote uh, the, the sustainability of new technologies in the, the sector. So, so my um, idea, my opinion is that it's uh, very welcome to uh, so integrate uh, this important uh, concept uh, within, with the technology. So it's extremely important. Thank you, Simona. I don't know if I can point something. Yeah, Maybe I will escape to the question, but as we were pointing here, a word that I really like that is integration. And indeed, when we call regarding the smart tool, in this case, nature based solution data. So when we put all together the point, the common point to in order, because after all, what we want is that everything goes in the, in the right way. And to go that, we need this integration of different solutions, nature based or whatever ones, smart tools, data, and in the end have what we call a decision. For sure, it will not be so easy like this. <laughs> uh, but in the end, what we want is a decision in order to take these actions. So if I can resume, um, not escaping by the question for sure, but putting out the one word is integration, combination, interoperability of the systems. And this is really important when we are uh, talking about the digital transition, these digital solutions and uh, the way that it can be performed. So only a small, escaping the question, but using in one word from the question. <laughs> Thank you, Katia. I can add something. Uh, uh, I think that, um, all that has been said uh, up to the moment, uh, and especially about nature based solutions, it just goes to to confirm that uh, we cannot we cannot we cannot be only focused on on our systems, on our drinking water and wastewater systems. Uh, when we are talking about uh, nature-based solutions, uh, they are part uh, of the solution uh, for the stormwater systems. So probably we can create some redundancies we can we can we don't need to, because in Porto we have a separative networks so we have to invest in the wastewater systems and also in the stormwater systems so but uh, when we use nature based solutions well uh, these are more uh, environmentally friendly on one hand they will they will allow the, the the storm water to infiltrate which is good i think and uh, and from an investment point of view, uh, they will uh, they will let us not make so huge investments in this kind of, of systems uh, on one on one hand. So I think it's absolutely key that uh, all across the world and Europe and whatever the regulators they 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 start to see the word the urban water cycle or the water cycle. It's like it 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 does not need to be urban. The water cycle in its integrated uh, uh, way. Uh, integrated in uh, and by integration I mean it's different stages but also, also integrated from a spatial point of view and from many other points of view so that's it <laughs> 
Thank you, Ruben. Alexis, or Nelson, Nelson, please come yeah. in. I'm sorry, I, I was listening to uh, what you, all you of you are, were saying, and I agree. Uh, I, I think it were um, nice interventions, but I have uh, something to say that uh, about uh, what is costly. We have the tools, of course, we have smart tools to 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 deal with, with the water utilities and the agriculture sector. But I think uh, we only will fight the water scarcity if we have we will have in the future uh, intersectoral. Uh, tools that combine the, the different uses because if we we in Portugal I'm Portuguese and so I will speak what I know better we have uh, this uh, water storage in the in dams and uh, and uh, the the the, uh, the several sectors goes to 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 collect water for the different uses. So if the agricultural sector will uh, take water for the, 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 the farmers, there is the water utilities that are uh, collecting water for the water supply. But if the, no one uh, knows what is, uh, what is taking, uh, what, what are the needs and what, what we should predict in the future, but uh, uh, we can run uh, out of water. In Portugal, there are several uh, dam, uh, dams here or storage uh, in, in the north. There was were, uh, we out of water because uh, the electrical powers uh, were uh, taking water for to to produce electricity, and some of the farmers and uh, users they run out of water. And this is a and uh, this 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 does not bring uh, also a good image because the Spanish the, we are we are a downstream uh, country. So the, the the farmers from Spain they want to uh, to let us out without water because they, the water comes from Spain and uh, this is a problem. This is the, the, the convention. This is uh, in the news in the the past uh, the, so two weeks I think, and this is a problem. So we need to have. Uh, of course, we need to use the smart tools, but we need. Also, to integrate uh, all the tools uh, or to manage in the broader way, like the watershed. I don't know, uh, it's an idea. <laughs> because we have uh, digital twins, we are all talking about the digital twins in the areas of, of the Porto. And it's uh, nice to have them, but we, have, uh, we need also digital twins in the farmers. But uh, the, the agriculture in Portugal, in south of Portugal, we have a different way to to collect water and to transport water to the farm. So there is a big collective irrigation system that lose also 30 or 40 percent of the water uh, 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 before they, they reach the, the, the farm. So we have lots of water here, lots of losses between the the the, the all the the, the these systems. And uh, the small municipalities in Portugal, they have aging uh, pipes and uh, sewers and uh, stormwater uh, systems. So and they have no money and they don't have uh, also uh, uh, human resources to, to uh, use these uh, water tools, so or smart water tools. It, this is a problem because how should we have the better, cheaper or I don't know how we can help these municipalities, smaller municipalities with lack of money and really lack of human resources to fight water scarcity. I don't know. This is a, only a, a thought and I would share with you. I'm sorry for being too long and thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you, Nelson. Uh, I wonder, Alexis, if you wanted to add something to this um, topic. You, you're muted. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry for this. No, at this point, I have nothing else to add. Uh, I'm conscious of, of our time here. Um, I, I copied a couple of uh, questions from the chat uh, and from the audience that I don't think we had a chance to, to answer. I don't know if you have any recommendations on, on, on how we could address them, maybe on, on LinkedIn, or we'll follow your recommendation there. Yes, absolutely. I think that there are some questions also coming in on LinkedIn. So what we will do, um, we will gather with the, the participants of this seminar and we will try to respond to those in writing and the different channels. 
uh, also the ones which are coming in on Zoom. And uh, also just to reflect a little bit on the, the new topics that came up in the last question, many of these will be uh, discussed in the following seminar on governance and financial um, instruments to tackle water scarcity. So for example, the water rights uh, will be a topic, uh, also illegal abstraction and the sharing of water and also the price of water which is also one of the questions we didn't uh, manage to tackle, which is a big, big question. So I, I don't think we would have managed to to, to sort that out uh, in a half an hour discussion. So I would like to thank all of you uh, for joining us today. It has been a very, very interesting and engaging discussion. Um, and as we said, this seminar has been live streamed and will stay online. So anyone who would like to catch up on the beginning of the seminar, or watch it later, will be able to do that. And uh, we will uh, try to answer all the questions that we didn't manage. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you, Eva. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.